Hello guys, my name is Wong Honfei from Malaysian Rubberboard. Today I'm going to present you my presentation title How to Form Governing Equations of Fluid Flow for Non-Newtonian Fluid. So this is my contents. Firstly, I will present to you the introductions why we need to use incompatible generalized Newtonian model. Secondly, a five-step procedure which consists of step one, choose your non-Newtonian model and flow system. Step two, form a matrix for rate of strain strain, gamma dot. Step three, calculate magnitude of the rate of strain tensor, gamma dot. Step four, form a matrix for total strain tensor, pi. And step five, and this is the final step, combine total stress tensor into Cauchy momentum equations. And thirdly, uh, actually this is the bonus part, what happens if the power law in test n is equal to 1 and another bonus part? Can two-dimensional shear flow system reduce to bodily layer model? And then, conclusions, finally, acknowledgement. Introductions, as we all know, we already have never stop equations to capture the motions of Newtonian fluid. And for non-Newtonian fluid, the one-dimensional and bodily layer model is easy to form the governing fluid flow equations because the one-dimensional flow such as pipe flow and two-dimensional boundary layer have only one shear rate component. Then, how to form the governing equations of free flow for those flow systems which are more complicated than one-dimensional and boundary layer model because they have more than one shear rate component. So, we need to apply incompatible generalized Newtonian model which proposed by Dr. R. P. Bird for those complicated flow systems. And the incompatible generalized Newtonian model is given by equation 1. In order to make my presentation more simple, so I would just ignore the negative side here. And this is called non-Newtonian viscosity model. And the gamma dot here is called magnitude of the rate of strain tensor. And the gamma dot at the right hand side is called the rate of the saline strain. Obviously, these two gamma dot are different and the calculations are also different. And this is the five step procedure. First step, we choose a non Newtonian model and determine the flow system. Step two, calculate the rate of saline strain. Step three, calculate the magnitude of the rate of strain tensor. Step four, calculate the total stress tensor. And final step, combine total stress tensor into Cauchy equations. And step one, choose the non-Newtonian model. In this case, I would like to choose power law because it is the simplest and time-independent model and is given by equation 2. To analyze equation 2 with equation 1, we must modify equation 2. And this term is called the non-Newtonian viscosity model. And then determine our flow system. I will choose two-dimensional shear flow in Chartersian coordinate system. So we will have four shear rate components, which are del V del S, del V del Y, del V del S, and del V del Y. So step two, calculate the rate of saline strain gamma dot. The gamma dot is given by the gradient operator V plus the transport of it. So it's given by equation four. Then substitute all the shear rate components found in step one. So we will get equation five. So we can prove that gamma dot SY is equal to gamma dot YS. And step 3, calculate the magnitude of the rate of strain tensor is given by equation 6. I think many of us are not really familiar with equation 6, so let me explain a little bit about these equations. The double dot here actually is called Frobenius norm, and Frobenius norm actually is the square root of the summations of the square of the element in every row, every column. Then we substitute all the shear rate components found in step 1, then become like this. Then I will apply this identity, a square plus b square is equal to a plus b square minus 2ab. Then we will get these equations. The reason why I need to use this identity is because the a plus b here actually is the continuity equations and this one will be equal to 0. So this term will be equal to 0. So it can be simplified like this. Or you can simplify again like this or like this. And I will use square root of A to represent any of these three equations. Step 4. Calculate 
the total stress tensor. The total stress tensor is given by equation A. So we will get these equations. But how to calculate tau SS, tau SY, tau YS, and tau YY? Substitute equation 6 into equation 3, we will obtain equation 9. Further substituting equation 7 into equation 9, we will get equation 10. Further substituting equation 5 into equation 10, we will get the stress stress in matrix form. And actually, equation 11 is also called as the constitutive equation in matrix form. Substitute equation 11 into equation 8, we will get the total stress tensor in matrix form. And it shows that pi sy is equal to pi ys and is equal to tau sy and is equal to tau ys. And step 5, the final step, the two-dimensional Cauchy momentum equation in Charterson coordinate system is given by equation 13 in x momentum directions and equation 14 in y momentum directions. And here I will not show you how to derive both of these equations and you may refer to any fundamental textbook to read the derivations. Substitute equation 12 into equation 13 and equation 14 and then we will start with x momentum direction first. We will get these equations and expand it, we will get these equations. Then we will get these equations and then I will take out one unit out from this term and combine with this term, we will get this term. And we find that this one actually is the continuity equations and is equal to zero. So equation 15 is the final equations in S momentum directions. Use the similar procedure, you can solve the equation in Y momentum directions and is given by equation 16, where A power to the N minus one divided by two is given by equation 17 and the differentiate of it with respect to del s is given by equation 18 and differentiate it with respect to del y is given by equation 19. What happens if power law in text n is equal to 1? Let's consider equation 17 until equation 19 first. So the equation 17 will become 1 and equation 18 and equation 19 will become 0. Substitute equation 20 and equation 21 into equation 15 and equation 16, we will get equation 22 and 23. And when the power law in test is equal to 1, the consistency in test M will be equal to dynamic viscosity. So equation 22 and 23 can be written as equation 24 and 25. And actually, equation 24 and 25 are known as two-dimensional neighbor stock equations. Can two-dimensional shear flow system reduce to boundary layer model? The answer is yes. Let's consider figure 1. And this is the boundary layer model. And it only has one shear rate component, which is del u del y. And it does not have y momentum equations. Thus, boundary layer model does not have pi ss and pi y y. So from equation 8, the pressure term will be equal to 0. For steady state, no gravity force and boundary layer does not have del u del x, del v del x, and del v del y. So we will set these three shear rate components is equal to zero at left hand side of equation 15. So let's reconsider equation 15. For no gravity force and steady state, these two terms is equal to zero, and no pressure term, and those three shear rate is equal to zero at the left hand side of equation 15 so we will get equation 26 and also we consider equation 17 set this two shear rate is equal to zero so we will get a is equal to del u del y square substitute equation 27 into equation 26 we will get these equations and simplify it we will get this equation and we find that this is an interesting equation because this is this term is u and this term is v prime this term is u prime and this term is v and recall this formula so we can simplify this equation like this and add up the power n minus one plus one here and we will get equation 28 
and we prove this caused by MGLU to solve the boundary layer flow of power law free. Conclusions we can use this five step procedure to derive governing equation of free flow for any non Newtonian model, and also we can derive governing equation of free flow for any flow system such as three dimensional coordinate system, spherical coordinate system, and etc. But make sure the adopted Cauchy equation tallies with the flow system and we would expect a much more complicated governing equations. Um, I would like to thank my company Malaysian Rubber Board and both of my mentors who are Dr. Marina Fernando and Dr. Julia Goff who are based in United Kingdom. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please contact me through my email or my WhatsApp number. And that's all my presentations. Thank you.